stand in your Bibles tonight, the book of Psalm, Psalm 46. Psalm 46, I'd like to read this passage of Scripture to you. Most of the Psalms are written by David, and this is an exception. Now, this Psalm is written by one of David's ancestors, uh, someone that came after David. The man's name is Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a poet, and not only was he a poet, but he was a king in Jerusalem. And God mightily used him. He was one of the kings of the divided kingdom that uh, lived for the Lord. And God blessed him. And in a moment when he needed great encouragement, he's reflecting on the goodness of God. We come to this passage of Scripture. I'd like to read it to you. I don't know about you, but uh, uh, this has been a difficult season. Uh, we make no bones about it. Uh, every time I think that uh, our battle with uh, the discomfort of uh, the coronavirus is about to kind of subside. It just seems like it just yields its ugly head again. And we're dealing with that. We're dealing with death. We're dealing with uh, loss and heartache and uh, great burdens, uh, sickness, disease. (laughs) I'm telling you, it's a difficult season. Uh, But in the midst of difficult seasons and hard times, we need to be reminded that we have an almighty God. And he can be trusted. And like the psalmist David, on many occasions, points us to the faithfulness of God, Hezekiah looks back on a situation in his life, and he reminds us that God is our refuge. God is our refuge. And if God is your refuge, then everything's going to be all right. You can be sure of it. The Bible says here in Psalm 46, We'll read all 11 verses. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof, shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. That word Selah, we see it three times in this passage of Scripture. And like a song, it breaks this psalm into three parts. The emphasis remains the same. In verse 1, the Bible says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Verse number 7, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. And verse number 11, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. God is our refuge. A refuge is a place to hide, a place to go, a place to resort to quickly, a place where we can find help when we need it. I've had numerous refuges in my life. I can think of several. You've probably had those too. Uh, It starts at home, and I remember... My home being a refuge, and my mom worked very diligently to make sure we had a home that was a refuge, and I praise God for that. I think about my grandparents' house, and both sides, the Sturgill side and the Bices, and even my grandmother Sarah Chapman and Mutt and Tom Smith, my aunt and uncle, their homes were refuges to me as a place where I could go. Thank the Lord for it. I had an interesting refuge for years when I traveled and sang the quartet. 
we spent a lot of time in a 15 passenger van and it's kind of interesting because every day you're in some new place with new people and uh before you know it you're the van it actually became a refuge it's a place where you could hide <laughs> uh, my home was a refuge and i thank my wife for working very diligently to make that make it that way all these are earthly refuges and they come and go but the bible says that in uncomfortable seasons, in difficult times, in moments when things are uncertain, God is our refuge. Folks, I want you to know something. When God is your refuge, you have a place to hide and find comfort among the discomfort of a pandemic. When God is your refuge, you have a place to hide and refuge. In the midst of sorrow and death, and disease, uncertainties, and disappointments. When God is your refuge, you have a place to hide. And there is nothing that is bigger than your refuge. You see, God is our refuge. And God uses his word here to encourage us and help us. And King Hezekiah, as he looks back on a scene in his life, he says, folks, I just want you to know, I'm just going to sing a song about it. God is my refuge. He says, here's three verses I want to share them with you. Verse number one is trouble. Verse number two is refreshment. Verse number three is victory. He says, I just want you to know that God is my refuge. When we come to this passage of Scripture, the first section, they're all three divided by the word sealant. So we have the first three verses. The Bible says, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Now, when we see this passage of Scripture, we think, wow, it's, that's wonderful, and we're so thankful. There's a lot of folks that quote this verse, and you see it on walls, and you see it put places, and it is encouraging. I'll tell you what makes it more encouraging when you understand the context that it's in in the Bible. When we understand that God is our refuge and strength, a very present, right now, help in trouble. As I think about this, we're going to consider, first of all, trouble. Let's look back in Hezekiah's life. Hezekiah was the king of Israel. Uh, Hezekiah, uh, actually, I'm sorry, he was the king of Jerusalem. And Hezekiah, as king, was leading the way. Hezekiah was using the Lord to tear down strongholds that, and idols that kings before him, even his father, had raised up. The Bible says of Hezekiah that he claved the Lord. I'd encourage you to get your Bibles uh, after the message and read uh, the chapters in Second Kings, chapters 18, 19, 20, right in there, and read the story about Hezekiah. Hezekiah becomes the king when he's 20, I think 24 years old. And the Bible says he claved to the Lord and did what was right. He pleased the Lord. He didn't do everything perfect all the time. As a matter of fact, there were a couple times where he kind of cowed down and uh, was willing to kind of be subservient to the king of Assyria. His name was Sennacherib. He was subservient to that wicked king of Assyria, and he would pay some, he would pay some tithe, and he'd pay and try to keep the peace. But God stirred in Hezekiah's heart not to be guilty of bowing to the enemy, but to stand up and trust the Lord. And so, here's what Hezekiah's trouble looked like. Hezekiah is leading his nation, leading his people. And the city of Jerusalem is a walled city, and he, everyone gets inside the city, and we understand that the armies of Assyria, led by Sennacherib, the king, besieged the city of Jerusalem. Now, if you don't know what it means to besiege, you're in good company because a lot of people don't know what it means to be besieged. But if you're, a city is besieged, all that means is that a large army actually gathers on the outside of the walls of a city. And if they do not feel like they can penetrate the city in order to win the victory, they can't penetrate the fort, they besiege it roundabout and they cut off the water and they cut off the food. And the goal was just to starve them out. And we know that at least 184,000 Assyrian soldiers at this time has encompassed 
the walls of Jerusalem. They've cut off the supplies. They're going to wait Israel out. And this is the situation that Hezekiah is dealing with. This is Hezekiah's trouble. Uh, And if you think about it, it's pretty significant, is it not? That's his trouble. But he says, in spite of my trouble, in spite of the fact that politically things aren't going the way I want them to, in spite of the fact that the enemy is gathered up and it appears that the enemy is going to get the victory in spite of the fact that there is a difficult moment that I'm dealing with right now and my city is besieged by the wicked, godless, heathen Assyrians. He says, I found out something and I can testify to you that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help. In trouble. He says, In the time of my trouble, God was my refuge. And folks, I want you to know something. You can rest in the fact that the God of Hezekiah, the God of Jacob, who was very present in his time of trouble, will not forsake his children at this moment. At this moment, right now, God is our refuge, God is our strength. God is a very present help in time of trouble. Right now. You see, God is our refuge in time of trouble. Here's what Hezekiah says. He says, Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. He said, we're not going to be frightened and fearful and downcast and downtrodden. We're not going to let 185,000 plus soldiers from Assyria. We're not going to let waters roaring. We're not going to let mountains moving. We're not going to let swelling and shaking and difficulties on this earth shake us and shake our hearts from trusting in the Lord. All throughout the day today, I found myself reading in the Psalms and as I read through the Psalms, I'm very encouraged. I'm very encouraged. And the encouragement that I get is do not lose faith. In the midst of trouble, do not lose hope. In the midst of trouble, do not turn your back. So, you know what we're tempted to do. Now, Hezekiah had been guilty. Hezekiah had understood his daddy had, made a, had lost a battle, and Assyria had some type of uh, control over Hezekiah and his kingdom. And so, in order to keep the peace, what Hezekiah had to do is he had to, he had to pay. The Bible says that Hezekiah had actually got the gold off of the gates of the city in order to pay some of the tribute that he's supposed to pay. To keep the peace with Sennacherib, the king of Assyria. I mean, he had, he, had, he had succumbed and he had been fearful and he had done the wrong thing. But he says, you know what? I found out something. When I decided in the midst of difficult moments that God was my refuge, I didn't have to bend the rules. I didn't have to disobey God. I could with great confidence and faith rest in the power and might and strength of God. He said, God's my refuge. In the midst of trouble, God is my refuge. He is a very present help in trouble. Hezekiah says, I learned my lesson. It was hard. It was difficult. It was scary being in a city besieged by thousands of the enemy. But he says, I learned something. God was my refuge. In trouble. He says, and I'm just decided I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to fear. Though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Selah. As we read this passage of scripture, we're to think about that. Selah, meditate on it. Think about it. Think about it, folks. Think about the burden that you bear in your heart right this moment. 
Think about the uncertainty of the future. Think about the angst that you've carried around all day or all week or all month or all year. Think about it. Is your trouble bigger than God? <laughs> the answer is no. But I want to remind you of something. God is our refuge. Hezekiah says, let me testify. God is our refuge. It was rough. But I found out that God was my refuge. Number two, God is our refuge in trouble. God, as our refuge, offers, number two, refreshment. The scripture says, There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place, the tabernacles, the most high. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early, the heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Now, something about being in a city that's besieged, and Hezekiah can testify firsthand to this situation, is you run out of water. You run out of food. As the city was besieged, it became evident that there was some sort of inner strength that the Assyrians couldn't quite understand. You see, the Bible says that there's a river. There's a river. The story goes like this. Hezekiah stands up to King Sennacherib and says, Look, I'm not paying anymore. We're not putting up with this. We're going to trust in our Lord. Well, Sennacherib, being a heathen he is, he's, he makes, these, he's makes some awful, awful statements. He sends someone to give a speech and let Hezekiah and his people know that it won't be long until your own people be literally drinking their own excrement and eating their own filth because we're going to starve you out. You can't help but hear that kind of threat and have a little bit of concern. But Hezekiah said, you know what I found out? God was my refuge. You know what's going on inside the walls of Jerusalem? The spring of Gihon had been very strategically piped into the city of Jerusalem. And as long as those Assyrians had the city besieged, there was always water to drink from the inside. Do you know something I love about being a child of God? I have the indwelling Holy Spirit. The Lord Jesus has promised I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Do you know what Christian people have when they remember and they determine by faith to live for God and remember that God is their refuge? They have an internal refreshment that cannot be explained by an outside world. Folks, I want you to know, if you'll rest in the Lord, the most difficult times that you could ever experience... You're going to experience in them with joy and peace. You're going to experience them with the grace of God. You're going to go through the fire with the Lord. Hezekiah said, God's my refuge. And though the enemy's got me circled, though the enemy is cursing my God, God is my refuge. And there's a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles, the most high. There's a river, folks, that is the Holy Spirit of God that works in the hearts of God's people. It's easy to look at a difficult moment and think, oh my lands, what if this happens? Now you think about, there are folks in our country right now, and I'm not attempting to raise fear, but... I have friends that are meeting in this country, worship services in places where there is very little or no coronavirus, and their townships are finding them $50,000 a week. 
I know Bible preachers that continue to meet in respect of God's Word, in honor of God's Word, and forsaking not the sin with themselves together that are doing it the threat of imprisonment. Now, I pray that never happens here. So we look and we think, oh my, what happens? What if that happens? Oh, that would be the end of the world. It would be awful. No, God's my refuge. God's our refuge. He's our strength. He's our help. And you know what you'll find? You imagine the most awful thing that you might have to deal with. If you do it in the Spirit of Christ, guess what you're going to find? You're going to find a river that boils up inside of your soul and you will be refreshed with water that comes from heaven. The blessing and power of God. Hezekiah said, <laughs> it was hard, it was scary, it was difficult, it was trouble, but through it all, God gave me strength. And refreshment. Verse 5, he says, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early, the heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Hey, think about it. What do you have to fear if you know, no matter what happens in this old life, If you know that God is always going to meet you with grace sufficient, peace and joy that only He can provide. What do you have to fear? Think about it. Meditate on it. Folks, I'm so thankful God is my refuge. He's my refreshment. God is our refuge in times of trouble. God is our refuge. He offers refreshment. God is our refuge. He gives us victory. The story continues. Hezekiah, he's trying to lead his city. <laughs> he's besieged all about. And to make matters worse, that wicked Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, the leader of all these armies that has the city besieged, that wicked Sennacherib sends him a letter, sends him a note. Why don't you keep your finger in the Bible there in Psalm 46 and turn back with me to 2 Kings chapter number 19. 2 Kings chapter number 19. And look with me in verse number 9. The Bible says, And when he heard say of Tirhaka, king of Ethiopia, behold, he has come out to fight against thee, he sent messengers again unto Hezekiah, saying, Thus shall ye speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Let not thy God, in whom thou trustest, deceive thee, saying, Jerusalem shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. What is he saying? So here's what Sennacherib is saying to Hezekiah. He says, he says don't, think that, <laughs> don't think that you can trust in your God. Don't think that your God is going to protect you. He says in verse 11, Behold, thou hast heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands by destroying them utterly, and shalt thou be delivered? Verse 12, he says, Have the gods of the nations delivered them which my fathers have destroyed? He says, Have these gods from other nations delivered them. He says, oh, we've been capturing people. I've been doing it. My daddy's been doing it. We've been tearing it up. Have their gods done anything to help them? He says, what about the God, verse 12, Gozan? He didn't help those people. What about the God, Haran? He didn't help his people. What about the God, Rezeph, verse 12? And the children of Eden, which were in the Lasar. What about those gods? <laughs> they were useless. And this wicked king sends a message to Hezekiah and says, your God's going to be useless too. Now I'll just have you know something. The world, the flesh, the devil wants to get in your head and say, your God can't help you. 
I'll tell you, if your God is the God of the world, wealth, health, politics, if your God's a God, if you're resting in something that you can produce of your own accord, that God will not stand. If you're making up a God in your life and you're leaving the God of the universe out and you're sacrificing righteousness for worldliness, your God can't stand. But I'll tell you this, Jehovah God, Creator, Jesus Christ, God the Son, He can be trusted. So Hezekiah gets this letter from Sennacherib. The Bible says, verse number 13, Where is the king of Hamath and the king of Arpad, the king of the city, Sepharvim and Hena and Iva? He says, you know all these people we've already taken care of? Where are they? Where's their kings? Where are their gods? Your God in heaven. That's the message he sends to Hezekiah. Here's what happens, verse 14. Can you imagine the burden that Hezekiah is bearing? Verse 40 of the Bible says, And Hezekiah received the letter of the, of the hand of the messengers and read it. I can see him reading it. I can see the longer he reads it, the deeper the hole in his gut is. The Bible says, Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord, God of Israel, which dwellest between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. Thou hast made heaven and earth. Lord, bow down thine ear and hear. Open, Lord, thine eyes and see, and hear the words of Sennacherib, which hath sent him to reproach the living God. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations and their lands and have cast their gods into the fire. For they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore they have destroyed them. Now therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand, that all the kings of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. Can you see Hezekiah? Hezekiah has bowed down. He's got this letter, and he's spread it out. He's like, here it is, Lord. Now, here's what I want you to do. More importantly, not what I want you to do, what God wants you to do. I want you to, in your mind's eye, you may turn it into a literal letter. You may need to write out the things that are burdening you so badly. Write them down. And then get them and spread them out before God. And instead of wondering if a political party can get you through this, or wondering if a 401k can make it, or being concerned if you've done everything right so that your kids will turn out the way they should, whatever your burden is, just give it to God. The God who is your refuge. And I want you to know something. He'll give you victory. He'll give you victory. He'll give you victory in your heart. In the form of peace. And grace. And joy. Lay it out before the Lord. He'll give you victory. He'll give you victory. Maybe not in the exact way you thought he would. I don't know what... Hezekiah was thinking. You know, when Hezekiah poured, laid that stuff out before the Lord and started praying, Lord, prove that you're God and take care of my enemy. I don't know how Hezekiah thought he might take care of it. You know, some of us have these ideas. We're like, so what's God going to do? Is he going to send fireballs down from heaven? Or are they going to all have an upset stomach and have to go home? Or what's going to happen, you know? How's God going to take care of this? And I can't tell you how God's going to take care of anything. But I know God's going to take care of us as we put our trust in him. We can rest in that. Hezekiah poured it out to the Lord. He'd no more than finish praying. And the prophet Isaiah sends word. The Bible says, verse 20, 2 Kings chapter 19, Then Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, 
that which thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have heard. This is the word that the Lord has spoken concerning him. The virgin, the daughter of Zion, hath despised thee and laughed thee to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem hath shaken her head at thee. Whom hast thou reproached and blasphemed and against? And he goes into this prophecy. He says, I've heard your prayer. I'm going to take care of it. So I've said all that to say this. You remember God's our refuge? Psalm 46. God gives us victories. Hezekiah and the nation are pent up inside the walls of Jerusalem. He's poured out his soul to God. And come to grips with the fact that God is his refuge in trouble. God is his refuge and offers refreshment. And look what he says, verse number, 20, verse number 8. He says, come, behold the works of the Lord. I can see it. He comes to the walls. He's climbed up so he can see out. He's been looking for days to see what's going to happen, see what's going to come of all these soldiers, thousands and thousands of them. And he's climbed up there to see what's going on. He comes, he sticks, he looks up and, what in the world? There are dead Assyrian soldiers everywhere. Can you see it in the psalm? He says, come, come and see. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. He says, God's taking care of He's looking off the wall. And 184,000 Assyrian soldiers are laying there dead. The Lord only knows how they died. But the Lord took care of the enemy. The Lord gave victory. And folks, I want you to understand something. God is our refuge, and he gives us victory. The Bible says in verse number 10, he says, listen, I want to remind you of something. I know the trouble's real, the burden's great. But never forget that God is our refuge. He says, be still and know that I am God. That phrase, be still, be calm. It literally means take your hands off. Aren't we so guilty of manipulating and pushing and doing our thing? It literally means be, be still. Take your hands off of it. Be calm. Let God have control. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. He says, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Think about it, folks. There is truly victory in Jesus. There's this old song, I'm a winner either way. Look. I am guaranteed victory. The old preacher was reading the book of Revelation. Somebody came to him, you're not smart enough to be reading back there. He said, that's all right. I know enough to know that we win. <laughs> Folks, we're hopeful people. We're the most hopeful people. And as we rest and anchor our souls in the faithfulness of God, we're going to find that God is our refuge. God is our refuge. And everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. He's faithful. That's Hezekiah's testimony to you and I. And the inspiration, the Spirit of God, God is our refuge.